So, in today's reveal stream, Bungie showed the activities that we will be revisiting in the Age of Triumph update. We'll start with the tower, which is pretty simple. The speaker will have a quest for you that is pretty long, about 12 steps according to the stream, which will take you through basically everything in the game. The amount of Shaq's PvP weekly bounties has been increased from 1 to 2 as well, so there's some more chances for loot there. The Eververse was also spoken about, but I'll talk about that at the end. Next, we'll look at the main point of the stream, the activities. First up, there is now a weekly story mission, which will reward 20 legendary marks up to 5 times per week, and a Treasure of the Ages once per week. Treasure of the Ages is the microtransaction treasure for Age of Triumph. The weekly story mission will be from a batch of missions on certain areas each week, and then will change every week. Surprise, surprise. There's also the weekly PvP, which gives a Treasure of the Ages. Next, we have the Heroic Strike playlist, which seems to be unchanged, also rewarding a Treasure of the Ages once per week. So there's three chances for Treasures of the Ages per week for free. Next, we have the Nightfall, which is unchanged, with the exception of the Daybreak modifier, which is new. The Daybreak modifier essentially turns the Nightfall into the Mayhem mode for PvE. Your abilities and supers recharge very, very quickly. It is still 380 light. The Daybreak modifier will show up about once a month starting with the update, but later in the year, the specific date being July 18th, there will be six weeks in a row of Daybreak. Seems like a very specific timing, don't you think? Hmm, interesting. Also, the Blue Flames have returned, and the Nightfall buff is back. The Nightfall buff being a global reputation boost for the week. Next up, Challenge of Elders was brought up to 390. And finally, we have the weekly featured raid, which is a 390 raid with all challenges enabled. We learned today that the Crota challenges are the Death Singer and Crota, not the bridge encounter like some people were thinking. So, be interesting to see what the Death Singer challenge might be. So that about does it for the activities as far as the stream goes. The Eververse looks like it has been dramatically simplified. The Treasure of the Ages is the final offering from the Eververse. It will give various items from all past events, going back to the Taken King. It will possibly also give you new items for the Age of Triumph specifically, including an armor set, a ship, shaders, and ornaments. And we actually saw an ornament for Necrochasm, so it looks like that will be returning as well as the Mythoclast. The Eververse kiosk was also updated with nearly everything from every past event that you can now go buy with Silver Dust. So if you are missing something from the past, you can go back and buy it if you want. This is a good way to purge any remaining silver that you might have on your account, as silver will not be transferring to the next Destiny experience, it will stay in Destiny 1. Destiny 1, though, will stay live for the foreseeable future whenever the next Destiny experience releases. Again, important to remember, no Eververse items will transfer forward either. So if you're asking yourself, why would I buy anything if it's not coming forward? Well, it's a great question. It's something that everyone should definitely remember when possibly buying Eververse microtransactions. That is all from the stream. I wasn't really expecting too much from this, since they said that they were only going to be talking about the events. That's exactly what they did. And what they talked about is basically what I expected for the most part. Not too many huge surprises. Uh, maybe the Blue Flame thing was a surprise, I don't know. It's the end of the Year 1 Destiny experience. They're just throwing as much loot and as much stuff as possible at us. Marks, treasure boxes, you name it. Next week's stream will give us a glimpse into the items that we'll be earning during this last event, including the raid weapons, which again was left pretty ambiguous. Now, if you were to ask me, considering what Bungie is doing for this event, it would not surprise me in the slightest if elemental primaries were returning. Bungie just seems to be throwing everything at us. They know people like elemental primaries. So if I were to guess, they would probably give us them too. But 
we will get confirmation next week. That's going to do it for me, guys. Thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you next time.